So here we are in front of the computer. I have transferred the images. They are now here in the browser window and you can see very distinctly the difference with the daylight white balance and the tungsten white balance. The tungsten white balance gives you that bluish tint while the daylight white balance gives the reddish type of tints. So uh, for my taste, I have uh, decided to be working with these uh, bluish uh, images here. This is a very stable uh, coloring. Uh, if you look at this here, this is the picture that I took of all the fabric. You see from pink to black to silver to black here and gold on top, you see nearly no difference when it's turned to the infrared and even the black is not that uh, black. So for the demonstration I will be working with uh, this image here of uh, the back as a close-up. Why not here as a close-up? It will give us a better view here. So I bring this image into Photoshop. Here we are. This is the raw editor. In the raw editor, I will not do that much. I prefer to bring the images for a very simple treatment into Photoshop itself. So I will click onto the open image without touching anything. First thing first, let's go and see for the uh, levels by doing Control L brings you to the level or by going image adjustments here and looking for a level you have control L which is a shortcut I will bring here the sliders to each end of the histogram that is shown here this is to enhance and take the histogram that is there and make it now full screen so here we are so I now have better highlights and better low lights that are there. Now it's time to turn this into a black and white. One of the good way to turn to black and white is to go control U for U in saturation and take the saturation slider and bring it completely down. This takes off all the color information that is included in the image and then by playing slightly you see slightly with the U just gives a little little difference here in the image playing with the lightness I will just go down a bit here and I have my infrared retouched image black back in black and white one of the little tip that you can use to add that little glow that we used to see in the previous version of black and white, which was when we had film, was to add a little glow to the highlight. This can be done by duplicating the background layer. And on the top layer, you will go into Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and add a big blur here. You see I'm using kind of 20 or 30 depending on the type of image that you have but I want a very blurred edge here. So I will take this edge now that the transfer is made I will change the blending option to lighten. So let's take a look closely here. If I go to the normal blending, it's all blurred. But if I go to the lighten, then I see through and only the light parts of the images will be enlightened. Now to increase the effect of the blur and highlight effect, 
I will now go and change the level setting on that single layer here. Control L will bring me to the levels. I will just increase slightly the level itself. And here it is. So I have my basic image and a little bit of level. But the last secret that you want to apply to give that ancient look will be to add some noise to the image. So I want to make a copy of these two layers to make a new workable layer. So Control, Shift, Alt, and E. Very complicated key set, but Control, Shift, Alt, and E will give me a new layer on top that represents the addition of the two previous here. Now the only thing that I'm missing to give that old look, that old film look, if this is what I want to do, is to take that layer here and go into Filter, Noise, Add Noise. I will click on the Monochromatic because I don't want colored noise. And I will be adding something like, you see, 30% here, 35% and this will give me a very nice level of noise on the image and i have the original